What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can build a reminders app from scratch. So fully end to end, what we're going to be building is this. So as you can see, we have a list of items with dates. So we can come on up here and hit this plus button. We can type some titles. So let's say do something. We can type a body for the reminder. So some along body. And of course, the most important part of this, we can select a date with a time, hour, minute, AM, PM uh, for this actual reminder to trigger. We can save it and it gets saved to our list. And of course, we also added a test button where we can actually tap this and let's tap it twice and close this app. And in just a second, you'll see that we'll actually get our test notification in hopefully a few seconds like so. And we might get a second if I hit that button twice. Not sure if I got to hit it twice. Anyways, uh, we're going to be building this. So make sure to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe if you're new and let's jump into the video. As always, we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application. Let's make sure we have Swift selected for the language and let's call this my reminders. And let's save this on our desktop and get into the actual app. So first things first, we want a way for the user to see a list of their scheduled reminders. And to do that, we're going to basically use a table view. So let's set up a simple table view. And then we're going to actually deal with how we can schedule a notification. And we're going to implement that. So a simple table view, if you're not familiar already, I've got a separate video on this. So do take a look at that if you need that, uh, need that step. Or you can feel free to just follow along. So we're going to add an outlet. We're going to make sure that we set its delegate and set its data source. Let's come down here and add some extensions to our view controller for the delegate. And let's copy and paste this for the data source like so. And let's see, we also need a way to hold our reminder objects. So let's create a struct at the bottom of this class, which is going to be my reminder. And it'll take a title, a date, and a uh, identifier. And basically, whenever we schedule a new reminder in our app, we're going to hold a reference to it in this so we can show the title and the date that it's set for in our list. So let's come up here and create an array, which is going to be models, which is going to hold my reminders and it's going to start off empty. Let's implement our basic table view functions. So in the delegate did select row, we want to deselect a row if we select one with an animation. And in the data source, we want number of sections, which is going to be one. And let's see, we want number of rows, which is going to be the number of models we have. And we want cell for row at index path. We need to dequeue a cell on the table view with a given identifier. We'll just put cell in there for now, and we're going to assign that in the storyboard. And let's see, what else do we want to do? Let's just set the uh, cells text label first. And it's going to be in the thing in our models at the given position dot title. And let's not forget to return the cell. So let's go to our storyboard and do some setup there. And of course, we need to connect our table view outlet. Let's also go ahead and expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. Let's do this side as well. Cool. So first things first, let's actually take this controller and embed it into a navigation controller. That'll give us the navigation bar up here. So go ahead and select this controller. 
come up here and select editor and we want embed in navigation controller whoops not tab bar controller you can hit command z and that'll undo that let's do that one more time so come up here to editor embed in navigation controller like so we have this bar up here now so let's give this a title of reminders Let's also select the nav bar up here on the actual navigation controller and check this box for a large title. Just makes it look a little nicer. Let's also give this title a different color. Let's stick with uh, like a blue. I think it gives it a little bit of a nicer look. Uh, let's see what else. So let's come over here and drag in our table view object. So let's grab a table view, drag it on in. Don't forget to connect your outlet from up here to the table view. Let's add some constraints. So select the table view, come down here and select this. We wanna put zero on each side, which is gonna pin the table view to each side of the screen like so. Let's also go ahead and add some buttons. So we want a plus button here for the user to be able to create a new reminder. And let's add another button here, which is gonna be test. And when the user hits test, uh, we'll schedule a notification that'll fire in like five seconds. That way you can actually see in your simulator that the notifications are in fact working. Uh, and of course, if you're gonna put this into a real application, you can remove that button. So we're gonna search for a bar button item and we're gonna first drag one over here. Let's set its type to add and let's do one more button and let's drag it over here and let's uh, double click in here and type in test. Uh, Let's just keep it at test. I was gonna say test notification, but let's just let's just do that. Let's see what more do we need to do in here. For now, let's just add one more controller, and this is gonna be the view controller where a user is gonna create a new reminder. Um, but we're not gonna actually put anything in here yet. Let's let's uh, finish out this first controller. So let's go back to our view controller file, and in here. As you saw, we have two buttons, so we need to add two actions. So the first one's gonna be did tap add, and we're gonna show add view controller. And we want one more, let's copy and paste that. And this one is gonna be did tap test. So in here, we're gonna fire test notification. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and create a new file for that add controller where we're going to create a new uh, Create a new notification reminder rather so right click that hit new file Cocoa touch class make sure this is Swift make sure this is UI view controller Let's call this add view controller keep this box unchecked and This will go ahead and create a new class for us like so let's go ahead and delete this template code that Xcode gives us Let's delete this comment in uh, view did load. Let's talk about what we need to schedule a new notification or create one, a reminder. So we need basically a date that we want this reminder to get fired off. And we also need a title and a main part of the notification, which they, as an Apple, uh, calls the body. So we're gonna want basically three actual UI components in here. The first one is gonna be a text field for the title. So we're gonna say title fields, the UI text field. We want one more for the body, which is gonna be body fields. And then we also want a UI date picker, which is gonna be, uh, as you can imagine, the item that's gonna select the date. And we're gonna create an action in here, which is gonna be called uh, did tap save button and when the user taps this as you can imagine we're going to just validate that there is in fact text in both of these fields and the user has a date picked so we are going to say if let title text equals title field dot text and we wanna make sure that the title text is not empty, like so. Let's copy and paste this a few times. So we're gonna copy that from here to there. Let's do them on new lines. 
The next one is going to be body text. Make sure the body text uh, is not empty. Let's copy and paste that there. And let's see, the next thing we want to do in here is get the actual date from the date picker. So we're going to say target date equals date picker dot date. And let's leave this here for now. We're going to come back to this after we implement a test notification. But before we leave this controller, let's add a public property, which is going to be completion. And this is going to basically be a function that gets assigned from the controller that presents this controller. And it's going to be our mechanism to hand back the information that the user has added here. Uh, in other words, the title, the body, and the date. And the other controller from which we arrived here is going to be responsible for scheduling this notification. So let's say this is a function which takes a parameter of string, string, and date, and it returns a void. And we want optional up here because uh, this may or may not be assigned on uh, initializing, so the other controller can assign this. Uh, so anyways, let's head back to our main view controller. And let's actually hit Command R to make sure we're compiling. I uh, don't have any issues. And let's get our simulator open. Let's not use this simulator because this other one is open already. So make sure you come up here and select whatever simulator you want. We're going to stick with this iPhone 11 Pro Max. So once we launch the app, we should get an empty screen with our title and our buttons. So we got our title, our buttons, tap the buttons, nothing should happen. All right, perfect. So let's go to our main storyboard and not forget to connect these buttons that we've added to the IB actions we've created. So let's right click this and let's grab did tap add. And we wanna, we wanna drag it to this add button. Same thing for the test. Grab this and drag it here. And let's go implement these functions in the view controller. So let's start talking about the notification itself. So the meat of this kind of app. So notifications are handled by a library that Apple provides called user notifications. So first things first, we need to import that. So come up here and let's import user notifications. User notifications has the mechanisms for a couple of things. Uh, the most obvious one is scheduling notifications. The second one is authorizing permission from the user to schedule those notifications. And it does several other things. So the most important thing that you have probably seen in other apps is we need to show a pop-up that's going to read something along the lines of so-and-so app wants to send you notifications, allow or don't allow. Once we have permission, then we can actually schedule. So let's actually implement it in this test function. We want to first get the permission, uh, rather we want to first request the permission. So we're going to say UN user notification center current, which is a shared instance of the notification object that handles the scheduling and requesting and all that fun stuff. We want to request authorization and we can pass in a array of what type of authorization permission we want. So this is things like we want to be able to send an alert. We want to be able to update the badge, which is the number that you see sometimes on the app icon. And we want to be able to play a sound. And then of course, over here, we have a completion handler. Let's go ahead and close this right panel to give ourselves some more room. So this completion handler basically takes a bool for success and an error if one occurs. So success and error in. And what we want to do in here is if we have succeeded, let's uh, schedule test. Else, let's uh, say we have an error. So let's, uh, so else, we're going to say else if let error equals error. Let's just print out error occurred. So let's hit command R and see what we get when we tap this button. So you can go ahead and ignore this warning. It's just yelling at us that we're not using this error. 
So let's hit this test button and you can see that we get this pop-up here, which is basically saying that my reminders wants to access your permission. Either you want to allow or you don't allow. So let's hit allow. Cool. So let's hit this again. And we can see nothing actually happens because we have already requested the permission and the user is already authorized. So let's create another function. And this one's going to be schedule test. And in this success if, we're going to say schedule test. Now we want to actually schedule a test notification. So a notification has three main pieces. Uh, firstly, we have a request, which we're going to send to the user notification uh, center, which is we're going to request a notification be added. A notification itself has a content parameter, which is things like its title, its body, its sound, etc. And the third piece is the trigger. So user notification center allows us to trigger a notification being sent based on a variety of different criteria. So one of those criteria, as you can imagine, is the date. So given a date in the future, we want to fire this notification off. There's also some pretty nifty other things in there, like location. So if you want the user to get a notification when they've arrived at a particular location, you can do that as well. Um, and there's some other cool stuff in there too, but we're going to do with dates. So first things first, let's create a uh, notification content object. So we're going to say let content equals un mutable notification content. And in here, we're going to say content.title is hello world. Content.sound is default. Content.body is my long body. And let's copy and paste this a couple times. So that basically is our content. The next thing we want is the trigger for the, the notification. So the trigger, uh, we're going to use dates. So we're going to say let trigger, and it's going to be UN calendar trigger, calendar notification trigger. And if we open up this, we can see that we can initialize with uh, date matching. And this also takes in a repeats uh, for obvious purposes, if you want this notification to repeat on the given date. So we're going to say false. And a common question that people ask is, how can a date repeat because it's a date in time? So this actually takes in date components. So you could specify uh, on the fifth week of the year, repeat this notification. That's why this repeat variable and parameter exists. So we're going to get uh, the components of a particular date. So let's create a date up here first. So we're going to say target date is the current date. And we're going to add a couple seconds to this. We're going to do 10 seconds. And let's come in here and get the components of this date. So you can say calendar current components, date components. We want to make sure we get the plural. Pick this first one, and we're going to supply some components in here, and it's going to be for the target date. And the components we're interested in are year, uh, let's see, month, day, hour, minute, second. So basically what we're saying with the date components is basically uh, we want Swift to take into account each of the components. Um, and for example, if we don't include the seconds, it's going to wait until the next minute to uh, basically fire the notification, even though we're adding 10 seconds here. So let's see, now that we have this uh, trigger and the content, we need to create a request. So let's come down here and say request equals un notification request and we're going to initialize this with an identifier which is just a string that represents our notification in the future if we ever want to unschedule a notification we have to query it with an id let's just say some long id the content is content 
and trigger is trigger that we've created up here. And lastly, let's go ahead and schedule the actual notification. And the way we do that is UN user notification center, current, add, we wanna add the request that we've created. And it has a completion handler, which optionally returns an error if something went wrong. And we're gonna say error in. And we're gonna say if error doesn't equal nil, let's print out something went wrong. Otherwise, we should be good to go. Uh, and the way we're gonna test it is we'll just close the app and we should see the notification. So let's see if this builds and runs. So let's say Command R. And we get our app launched. Let's go ahead and click on our button. Let's go ahead and close the app. If the simulator decides to cooperate. And there we have a notification. So you can see that it matches the uh, the body and the title and the default sound was played. Um, so it looks like our simulator is for some reason slowing down animations or maybe my computer just lagging, but either way we have the test notification working. So let's, um, let me actually close this simulator and hit command R again, because it's simulator is being a little laggy. Bear with me one second. Sometimes the simulator is kind of a pain in the butt as I'm sure you're all aware of. But anyways, while that loads, let's start talking about uh, what we're gonna do when we, the user hits this add button. So first things first, we wanna show that new controller file that we created, which is over here, add view controller. So we're gonna say um, guard let VC equals storyboard. We want to instantiate that view controller with an ID. We're just gonna give it an ID of add, and we're gonna set this in the um, storyboard in just a second. And it's gonna be an add view controller. And else, if we're not able to instantiate it, we'll just return out of here. The next thing we wanna do is set a title. So we'll do new reminder. We wanna set the title style to not be large. We also want to set the completion handler. If you recall, we added a completion variable and this takes in a title, body, and date. And lastly, of course, we want to present the actual controller with a push animation like so. So let's head to our storyboard and add the fields and the picker that we talked about earlier. Let's actually also go ahead and get rid of this because this warning is bothering me. So I'll say else if error doesn't equal nil, which should get rid of the warning, which is yelling at us because we weren't using the error variable. Let's see, what is it yelling at us about now? Use of unresolved identifier because I probably didn't spell error right. So let's make sure we spell things correctly. Now let's go back to the storyboard and start uh, putting together this add reminder controller. So let's click up here firstly, open up the identity inspector on the right, and let's assign its class, which is add view controller. Let's assign its uh, ID, which is just add. And let's come in here and first add two fields. So UI text field, drag this on in. Pro tip, you can hit Command C and Command V to just copy and paste elements. Let's uh, assign some uh, constraints to this first field. So let's come down here and hit this. We want this to be 10, 10, 10 from the top left and right. And we want the height to be 52, like so. And it's a little tough to see, so let's actually give this a placeholder. So the placeholder for this is gonna be enter title, like that, a little easier to see. Let's, uh, let's also change the background of this to be a little, uh, 
a little uh, more gray. So let's select this one as well and come down here and add its constraints. So let's give this constraints of 20 from the top, from the bottom of the above field, 10, 10, and again, 52. Hit enter. Let's also give this a placeholder of enter body. And last but not least, let's come over here and uh, select a UI date picker. Drag this on in and let's set its constraints to be, let's hit this, to be 10, 10, 10, and 10, which will basically fill up this whole space. So you can see we can actually select the date and the time with AM and PM, which is exactly what we want. Let's connect our outlets. So we want the body field, of course, to the body field. We want the date picker to the date picker. And we want the title field to the title field. So something we need to quickly adjust if we hop into our add view controller is we want to change this from an IB action to a normal function. Because if you notice, we didn't have any buttons here to save the actual uh, stuff that we've entered. So we're going to create a bar button up here similar to this uh, with code. So let's head back to that add view controller. And in here, let's go ahead and create that top save button by saying navigation item dot write bar button item equals UI bar button item. And it's going to have a title, which is save. Style is going to be done. Target is going to be self. And the action is going to be did tap save. Let's close the side panel to give ourselves a little more room. Uh, did tap save button. We have an error over here because we need to add at objective C before this, like so. And if we hit command B, we should still be building successfully, like so. To wrap up this function that we've already completed for the most part, all we need to do is say completion. And we want to pass in the title text, body text, and target date. And if you don't recall, completion is this variable up here that the other controller is assigning. Uh, so basically, if we go back to this view controller, what we want to do is when the person hits the add button, if I can find that function right here, if the person hits the add button, uh, we show this controller, and when we assign the completion handler, we can basically get the content out of that controller in these variables. So the first thing we want to do is we want to dismiss that add controller. So we want to make sure that we do it on the main queue, which if you're not familiar with, it's a little out of scope for this video, but basically all uh, UI related updates should happen on the main queue. We want to say navigation controller dot pop to root view controller with an animation then what we want to do is we want to take this this content and create one of those structs that we talked about in the beginning of the video so which is going to be my reminder so we're going to come up here and say let my rather let new equals my reminder and this is going to take a title a date and an identifier. So let's actually use the body. Rather, let's use um, the, let's use this. Let's say ID underscore, and let's tack on the, uh, the title as the identifier. So ID underscore title, like that. And let's see, the next thing we want to do is actually uh, add this new variable to our models. And this is yelling up here with an error, actually, this first navigation controller line, because we need to say self dot. So we're gonna say self dot models. We wanna add this new reminder. And then of course, we wanna say self dot table view, or just tables, which is, what, which is what we called it. We wanna reload its data, because now that we have a new reminder, object we're going to show it on the screen 
And the most important thing, we want to actually schedule this notification. So again, we can basically copy and paste the majority of the code in here. So let's take all of this jazz and bring it on up here. So the content, the title, is going to be the title that we get in the completion block. The body is going to be the body. Sound is going to be default. The target date is going to be, instead of the current date, we're going to use the date parameter. And we're not going to actually add anything to it, like so. And I believe that about does it. Let's go ahead and dismiss my antivirus pop-up. And let's hit Command B, like so. And I think we are good to go. So let's hit Command R and let's go ahead and schedule a notification so let's hit this add button we get the screen let's say title is my title and this is going to be my longer body that is real and let's see let's select keep this at am to bump one minute and let me hit the save button and we can see that we actually crash so let's come down here and see why we crashed. So we definitely forgot to do something. We got an uncaught exception, uh, must register a nib or a class to DQ an identifier. Ah, so what we forgot to do is we forgot to set up our cell for the table view in the storyboard. So let's go back to our storyboard and select our table. Let's open up this identity inspector to bump up this number and let's open up our table now select the table view cell change the style to be subtitle and give it an ID of cell and let's hit command R one more time and actually before we run this app one more time something else we should do is when the user uh, hits enter when typing in any of these fields, we should dismiss the keyboard because the keyboard, as you saw, kind of covers this date picker. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do that. So let's quickly add that in to the add view controller. All we need to do is add the UI text field delegate and assign it for both of these fields. So title field dot delegate itself and same thing for the body field. And the function that we're interested in is should return. We're going to return true. And we're going to say text field resign first responder. And this will actually get our uh, keyboard dismissed when we're focused onto the field. So let's come in here and hit the add button one more time. Let's type in my title again. Hit enter. Let's come into here and type in a super long body enter let's add one minute to our time hit save and if you look at that we have our uh, actual reminder in our table now let's put this app into the background uh, pro tip you can hit command shift H when you're focused on the simulator and it'll take you to the home screen and let's wait out a minute to see this actual notification pop up while we're doing that, let's go to the view controller and add one last thing before we wrap up this video. So in our cell, we can actually also show the date that this uh, notification is scheduled for. And we're going to do that in the subtitle label, which Apple calls the detail text label. And let's actually open this up to see that our notification did in fact fire. Uh, but anyways, Let's go in here and assign its text to something. So we have the date in our model uh, that we are creating for each of the reminders we add. So let's pull out that date. So it's going to be models this dot date. And we want to convert this date to a, a string in a nice format to display. And the way we can do that is using a date formatter. And I've actually got a dedicated video talking about date formatters in, uh, in depth. So do take a look at that video if you're not familiar. 
but we're gonna say date formatter is a date formatter the format is going to be uh, let's see the month comma the day with the year and we're gonna say formatter let's copy this formatter string from a date and we're just gonna pass in that date and let's see what did we mess up string from date detail label we should put a question mark there because the cell may or may not have it it's optional let's hit command r one more time let's come up here and add another notification something a bit longer just put some junk in here and let's actually schedule this in the future for let's say tomorrow uh, tomorrow at 9.45 p.m. And let's hit save. Actually, if you come over here, you can see this is scheduled for March 21st, 2020. Uh, and we can actually get the uh, time out of here, too. So if you want to show the time, you can say at this hour, this minute, and the A signifies the a.m. or p.m., so let me just show you guys that before closing out. So again, let's come in here and just type in something in here. Let's put some nonsense and change the date. And you can see we now have the date and the AM. So it looks like we're not showing the hour and the minute. And the reason actually is pretty interesting. So the reason is we're not capturing that in the model so let's actually disregard that for the purposes of this video um, one thing you might have noticed is when we close the app and go back to the app our list of scheduled notifications goes away and the reason for that is we're not actually saving that list on disk so you can save it as well to make sure you show that list again so the user is not confused what happened to their reminders uh, you can do that by using something like user defaults or the realm database uh, for which both uh, I have dedicated videos. So do take a look at that. Uh, I don't want to cover that in this video as main thing was focusing on reminders. So yeah, that about does it. Uh, this video has gotten a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it off there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough and now understand how to set up notifications in your app. If you haven't done so already, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift tutorials, full app creation walkthroughs, and just some other tech videos along the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.